Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and today I want to talk about why we get out of bed in the morning, the power of motivation, motivation versus need. I believe we get out of bed for one of two reasons. Either we need to get out of bed because we got things we need to do, or we want to get out of bed because we got things we want to do. So there's one part of our behavior that is purely influenced by need and one part that is purely influenced by want. So we get things in life we do because we want and then we get things in life we do because we need. And so all of these things kind of create what we feel is a complex character. We look at the things we do and we look at the, sometimes the discrepancy between want and need and we feel we are conflicting complex individuals. Why are we so complex? Why am I so complex? Why do I do what I do? What makes me get up and do these things? Why am I... Why do I find myself in these situations? Why do I find myself dating these people? Why do I find myself working in this situation? We feel at sometimes that what we do has nothing to do with what we want to do. We feel that our work is redundant or pointless or we feel that the person we date or the person we're with is wrong for us. So what we feel is uh, at times we live lives purely based on want. You could call that the hedonistic life. Or we live life out of a sense of need. And that could be the religious life. You could say that uh, some people choose to live because they know they need to be a certain way. They live because there is an ought. I ought to pay the bills. I ought to get a bigger house. I ought to do this or that. So we have the religious individual who lives and acts and behaves in a way that is purely shaped by morality, conscientiousness, you know, the matter of right and wrong, what we should and should not do, how we should and should not be. And then we have a person that lives out of a search of flow or happiness or joy. And when you study my personality types, when you take my personality test, you know, this flow is the core here. What do I want? What do I enjoy? What do I like? But when you study the Enneagram, the matter is a little bit more complicated. The Enneagram describes people that live doing things they want and people that live doing things they don't want. So what could be the case is we could have personality types out there that have a more religious proclamation or a more conscientious proclamation in the sense that they set aside what they want for the sake of what they feel is right. You know, you can live by that matter of the superego versus the id. The, there are two concepts, the superego and the id and the ego. And the superego represents our higher self or our internalized voice of our parents. Clean up your room, take care of your shit, get things done. You know what's right, do what's right, be nice, you know, all those methods that represent our morality and what we have learned to do and what we learned not to do. And then we got the id that goes, but I want to have fun and I want to go out and I want to play and I want to do things and I want to have a good life. So we're torn between that id, that superego, that higher self versus that, uh, you could call it child that just wants to have fun and wants to have a good time. So I talk a lot about flow and I talk a lot about, you know, what the good life is. I talk about eudaimonia and that's a greek term and that's the term for what the good life is what is a good life and i believe uh, we live a life today where needs have a too high priority you know i often try to illustrate the issue and the problem of and life living purely for the sake of need and ought and morality what i feel is uh, we're trying to live a good life and we're trying to be good and decent citizens and we're trying to do our duty, but we're not happy. And so what I feel is, how do we get happier? What do we do to be happy? Okay, we might be doing the right things. Okay, we might be saying and speaking the right way. You know, there's this term political correctness that's saying the right thing, but it's not necessarily believing it's the right thing. So the issue is we say things we do not feel and we do things we do not want. 
And that's an issue because uh, what we want to look at is aligning what we want with what we need, you know, finding happiness while doing things that are important, while doing things that matter, while doing things that mean something. Finding happiness, finding flow in taking care of duties and in choosing the right duties for ourselves, doing the things that we will actually enjoy and taking care of things we actually want. My issue has been that I've had a one-sided focus on the pursuit of happiness. In the past, I've talked a lot about just, you know, wanting to be happy, just wanting to have a good time, just wanting to live a good life and pursuing flow and doing things we love. And I value these things and I think these things are important and I am going to keep talking about these things. Eight out of ten times I'm going to talk about these things. But I do recognize that two times out of ten, we need to do things that suck. You know, we need to do things that we don't want. We need to take care of things that are bullshit, to be frank. What that means is we need to sometimes adjust, compromise and accept difficult situations. And we need to take out the trash and we need to do things we don't like. So what we need to do is we need to learn to identify and deal with our stressors. The road to happiness, the road to a good life is, you know, taking all that complexity, um, stopping to do things, uh, stopping to let your needs and odds take over and finding balance between what you love and what you want and what you know is important and what you know is moral and right. So the question is, uh, can we be good people while can we be good keep people while doing what's fun? Can we be good people while enjoying ourselves? You know, take for example giving. A lot of people say giving should be devoid of self interest. We should give because well, giving is not generous if it's done out of self interest. Being nice to somebody is not honest if it's done out of self interest. But I believe if nobody lives out of self-interest if nobody does what they're happy doing then nobody's gonna be happy we're gonna be giving to each other sure and that's gonna be great and good but nobody's gonna be happy because nobody's gonna be having their self-interests met so what we need to do is we need to recognize okay self-interest is important why is it important what do we do with it can we use it for something yeah we can use it for personal happiness and gratification can we feel proud of ourselves? Can we feel good about ourselves? Can we feel happy about ourselves? I feel like a lot of us, we go to bed hating ourselves. We go to bed upset with ourselves, angry with ourselves. Oh, why didn't I do this? And I should have done more and I should have done it better. And I should have, I should have, I should have. You know, the needs oriented individual lives by that concept of should have. Because, you know, you always need to do more. Need is infinite. Flow is satisfaction you know and satisfaction is actually something that we can have right here right now peace of mind that's something we can get right now in any situation but stress that's something permanent that's something we can only get more and more of that's something that can amp up on our shoulders over and over more and more we never feel we have too much peace we never feel we are too satisfied we never feel we are too happy with ourselves. You can never be too much at peace. But you can be too upset. You can be too angry. You can be too dissatisfied. You can be too anxious. You can be too critical of yourself. So need is something that can amp up. But flow is something that we can just feel, you know, we can just feel flow, we can just feel happy, we can just let ourselves feel these things. But often I feel what breaks us out of flow is, uh, you know, when you're in flow, you're like doing things and you're happy, and you're not thinking, you're not self-conscious, you're just doing things and you're just happy, and you're just enjoying it. It's effortless, it's easy, it's fun. But you get critical of yourself, you start feeling naked, you start feeling exposed, you start feeling vulnerable. You know, it happens eventually, we all snap out of flow. Because, and it's like, bam, oh my God, did I do something stupid? Did I say something I shouldn't have? Did I do something wrong? And the other factor that makes personality so complex is emotion. Why do we do what we do? If we all did things because it made us happy, 
personality would be quite easy. We would all see a people doing things to be happy. But if we notice people do things to sabotage themselves and to mess up their own lives, then that suddenly becomes quite complex. Why do we suddenly sabotage ourselves? Why do we suddenly say things we shouldn't have? Why do we suddenly um, give up on a good possibility or a good opportunity? Why do we get afraid or chicken out? Why do we... Um, why do we mess things up you know and the answer here is uh, we don't always do things that we know feel right and good to us and so we're never truly our 100% ourselves we're, we're not always going to do what feels right and what feels good to us sometimes we're gonna do things that suck sometimes we're gonna do things we hate sometimes we're gonna do things we regret but um, a word of reassurance there I guess is uh, it's better to live a life of mistakes, doing things we might regret, than to do nothing at all and regret not having done anything at all. Perhaps the greatest mess up of them all is doing nothing. So, what I want you all to do is, I want you to take the complexity you see in yourself, the contradictions, all the stupid things you did, all the good things you do, all the things you like about yourself, all the things you dislike about yourself, and I want you to place them in context. Contextualize your emotions, your feelings. Understand, I'm not anxious with everything. I'm anxious with this situation in particular. I'm not upset with everyone. I'm upset with this thing in particular that one person said. I'm not afraid of everything, but I'm afraid of this thing that is very difficult for me to deal with, that is outside my comfort zone. Context is everything. You know, why do we do what we do? What intention do we have? What makes us do it? What makes us feel good about ourselves? What makes us struggle? What makes us sad? Some things we're going to love, some things we're going to hate, but we don't contextualize. We don't see the situation. We don't think, why am I feeling this way? What made me do this? What made me upset? What made this happen? So we just act irrationally. The MBTI, the Enneagram, the Big Five is all about promoting self-awareness and self-understanding. Contextualization is however missing in all three of these systems. What would they be like if we could see the context? What if we could see the nuance? Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one.